it was New Year's Eve day, Ugh. and it opened at noon. We just got there at like eleven fifty-five or whatever, and the door was open. So they were like, "Yeah, we're not quite open, but like, come on in. Like, we're not going to make you wait outside. It's cold." So we were like, "Great." So we just sat. And like took our coats up and then we just put our dollar bills up and there literally wasn't a stripper there yet. So then like, <laughs> like a, a couple minutes game. later, the door, the front door opens and it's just a stripper like with a big winter coat and a hat and scarf. <laughs> and I had one of my all time lines, if I may say, she just looked over and saw us and I went, we're ready when you are. <laughs> it killed the bartender laughed and everything. It was oh, really fun. Great. But it's so funny to see a stripper like in a fucking winter hat and uh, scarf. <laughs> Everybody, what's up? Welcome to Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank. I'm your host, Ari Shafir. And on today's episode, well, first and foremost, I got the Beacon. The Beacon Theater this Friday night, March 24th, in New York City. It's going to be wild. It's going to be a fucking party. I don't know why I've got this uh, hard hat. It's got nothing to do with it. It's dangerous, dangerous comedy. There's something there. There's something there. Anyway, uh, March 24th, I saved some cheap tickets for way, way up top. Uh, just a few um, to make sure the poor kids get in. $29 just for the top corners, and then, you know, with Ticketmaster's uh, $80 surcharge on top of that, it's uh, just barely unaffordable. So, get tickets for that. I got surprise guests. I got uh, a fun opening. You want to be in your seat at, by 8.05. Uh, maybe even 8. And what, what if they start on time? They never start on time. But to get your boost fast, and then get to your seat. Um, I got a New York-style playlist for you, from, from the doors open to whatever. I'm making it a party. It's my homecoming show, and I'm giving you guys a fucking show. And speaking of good shows, I'm going to be at the Comedy Mothership in Austin, Texas. My first time. Phones away. I saw a blog that said uh, Rogan's making people's phones be put away because uh, they want to say hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want everyone to record it. <laughs> Some of these things, dude, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's just a lack of understanding about what the fuck you're talking about. And then, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, no, it's so you pay attention and don't leak our material. And they go, what about Kramer? I'm so glad that was out. I was like, no, that also should have not been out. Kramer should have never have been out. Kramer should have just walked to the comedy store from the Laugh Factory going, fuck, that was a bomb. His, he didn't need that whole thing. He was trying something and it failed. It failed horribly. Um... <laughs> I mean, it felt really bad. We don't all have to see that. It's when you're like drunk in the street and barfing. You're laying by your barf, which I've done multiple times. It's bad enough waking up to your next to your puke and someone going to work and going, ugh, and you're like, no, that's what it looks like as you're fucking wiping puke off your face. You don't need that recorded. You don't need to lose your job over that. If you're late for work, lose your job over that. But not for, you know what I mean? Not everything has to be recorded. Uh, the point is, I'll be at the uh, Comedy Mothership. Use promo code BANDIT. Tomorrow, uh, March 22nd, if you listen to this right when it comes out, um, tickets go on sale 1 p.m. Austin time. There's not very many tickets, so you're probably going to want to use that pre-sale if you want to get tickets at all. And the promo code for that is BANDIT. He's not interested. So we did this podcast, me and Joe List and, uh, and, uh, and Henry Phillips, who I've known longer than Joe List, uh, a very funny L.A. comedian, um, one of the pro uh, alumni of La Crescenta, California. A fine city with a bowling alley. And we talked about strip clubs and how much fun we've had in them. And we did it on our way to see a fucking shredding American-style rock and roll band, White Reaper. We were like, come on, we got to do it. We got to do it. You know what? Let's just put this up. I got an album, and it is White Reaper. If you guys have never heard of them, if you like guitar-driven rock and roll, you will love White Reaper. Who should we replace? The Carpenters. You can't take down a black band. Sam Cooke stays up. Tammy Wynette's great. Have you ever heard Stand By Your Man? It's brutal. <laughs> What she stood by. The Cure is great. We'll take down Nathaniel Wrightliff and the Night Sweats. It's not their number one album. It's a fucking B-side album. And up goes White Reaper. I'm actually probably going to take that down and listen to it. So we podcasted as long as we could till the show was about to start. And we saw them. They fucking shredded, dude. I love rock and roll. I love rock and or roll. It's great. It's great. Fun time. I am old. I do put uh, plugs in my ears. 
you know, I'm not proud of it, but that's what I do. So let's start the episode. Um, I had a name for it. I don't remember what it was, but I did have a name for it. Um, oh, also, I got a whole tour coming up of Europe and the UK. Well, Zurich, Switzerland is it, uh, uh, March 28th. Tickets available for that. Uh, I'm going to go skiing, uh, and I figured I may as well do a show while I stop in. March 28th, Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, and then in uh, the end of April and um, in all of May, I got Glasgow, I think the 27th, London, um, and Manchester in eight, at the very end of April. And then uh, in May, see if I get this in order, Amsterdam, <sighs> Stockholm, Berlin, Vienna, Ljubljana, Slovenia, uh, two cities in Romania, Cluj, Nakabra, whatever, and Bucharest, and then finishing off in Athens, Greece. I tour weird spots because I like to live my life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. Joe List and Henry Phillips comes in, and we talk about strip clubs on our way to go see White Reaper. It's a fun one. It is a fun one, actually. We had a lot of good stories. Let's, let's not even delay. Let's go. Uh, 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 strip clubs are for... Mm, damn it. I did have a name for this. Damn. Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode 509. Um, uh, damn. Strip clubs are filthy. I love strip clubs. I love strip clubs. Oh, I guess I should say this then. <sighs> I guess I should talk about this. When I was at Norman's bachelor party. <laughs> we all went to a strip club. and I, I mean, should I even say this? Matching outfits. Bert got us matching outfits. We all hung. Oh, I, don't, I guess maybe delete that because I don't know if Bert's allowed to be hanging out with me. But, um. But anyway, someone gave us matching outfits. And so we went in there, just tops and bottoms. Do I have them here? I don't. And um, I got a lap dance and I came in my pants. Just blew a load right in my fucking matching short top, uh, button down top bottoms, or vice versa. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing at 37 years old to come in your pants during a lap dance. I forgot to tell that story on this. But regardless, the rest is fun. Ari Shavir Skeptic Take, episode 509. Uh, dirty Strip Club Stories. That's good. Um, with Henry Phillips and Joe Liss starts now. Yeah. Just a very successful person. This is what the setup you have. Oh, yeah. no, Just three of us uh, in a four by eight room. Yeah, no space. <laughs> Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Okay, and yeah. everyone's like, everyone. It, it's crazy when you have a friend from another place, like, ooh, you're right. And then from here, like, second room? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you have like, nails for, to, no. to hang up your pants? You're like a wealthy person. I'm like, this is the worst place I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> no space, literally no space. I was like, oh, we could do three people. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> We had to take Louie outside so we could do four people. <laughs> You're in Pasadena? I always now? feel like, it, no, I'm in Glendale. Glendale. I feel like it's like a, a Jenga game. Like everybody stacks stuff up like on the, the bathroom sink and stuff like toothpaste, soap, <laughs> everything. Like I, I had a girlfriend here for two years and I would go over there. And that's the one thing I remember is always feeling like I was about to knock a tower of shit over. <laughs> <laughs> it's so close. It's so close. And if you're a comic, remember that era where you had to buy your own CDs and have like towers of them? I don't know if you ever got mm -hmm. screwed yeah, in one of those that. deals, like yeah. rooftop that, or whatever. That's um, along with your film, not, not to just jump into a plug for your movie, but punching the, I tell everyone, Punching the Clown is like the best comedy movie ever. A movie about, out. He has told me about it. The <laughs> best com movie about comedy ever. And the second best... Is Caddyshack um, too? <laughs> no, it's uh, what do you call it? Inside Lewin Davis, which is about music, but it's like so perfectly nails comedy. But there's a moment in the movie, one of the best movies ever, where um, uh, Lewin Davis, Oscar Isaac, is trying to get rid of his records because he just has too many. Yeah, and he's staying at his buddy's house, and so he goes to slide them under the table to like hide them and yeah. it just bumps into resistance and he pulls them out and it's just that guy's box of records <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the dude's box of unsold records is also in there that's what it's like everyone oh, just has great. boxes of their own shitty cds oh it's so funny i feel like that joke bombed but My, no no it's it's i wasn't quite getting it it was it's more descriptive i um, wasn't sure yeah well I'm yeah. getting blown by a dog so i don't care yeah it's got d bandit it's got no, db but, uh, what was i gonna say oh yeah so um my favorite record. Uh... <laughs> ah, you like dogs, go. right? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, well, you have one now. <laughs> so uh, my favorite uh, record deal story was, uh, so there's a couple songs that I co-wrote with my friends, with my friend Joe Kelly Jr., who lives in Arkansas. He's not even, he's not Hollywood or in the, the business or anything. Ford? 
No, he's just his name's Joe Kelly Jr. and uh, but he writes these songs and uh, so he and I have collaborated on a couple of songs and uh, but he's in a real small town living there in like Mountain Home, Arkansas and he called me one time asking he's like hey man can I get another one of those CDs because uh, I'd get I'd buy them from the record label and then give them to him. Because, you know, he should have them. He co-wrote yeah, the songs sure. or whatever. And then I ran out, and then he's like, yeah, I need another CD. And I was like, all right, well, I'll try to get one. Didn't I send you some? And he goes, yeah, I was down to my last one, but then I met some guy who said he was a record. Or no, <laughs> no first he goes, I thought, I, heard, I read about somebody, an artist, donating their CD to the library because that way everybody could hear it. And so I took the last one, and I donated it to the library. But then I met this guy at a bar who said he, who he worked for a record label. He was from Nashville or something. So I said, all right, well, let me get you a CD. And so I took my CD out of the library <laughs> and then I gave it to the guy. But I said, yeah, you got to give it back within 21 days. Otherwise, they're going to charge me. And then I never saw the guy again. And now I owe the <laughs> library like a hundred bucks or something. And, he, and But the best part is he goes, man, the music business is tough. <laughs> 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 yeah, that it is. <laughs> it's, it's a just, tough business. I mean, when you're like, let me get my seat, immediately the guy's like, oh, no. But then he's like, also, I need that back. <laughs> like, okay. Definitely no. Yeah. We were doing it wrong. Wait, have you not seen Punching the Clown? I don't think so. Oh, you got to watch it. It's really I unbelievable. Watch, I don't watch movies. I just watch making of uh, music videos. I know, but this one's about your profession and really well done. Punching the clown? Yeah, but it's also, uh, this, it reminded me of that great scene in, in your movie where, uh, not to just sit here and blow you, but when you uh, <laughs> I'd rather have the dog. The guy, <laughs> he hands him the business card and he goes, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's oh, that. yeah, yeah. He goes, no, that no one, that's yours. <laughs> we had to fight for what that one a little move. bit. Um, Why? Because what, what, well, there were basically, there was, Greg, the director, myself, and then our editor, Carol Kravitz, who was a genius, who turned this, you know, movie into like a 90 minute, like totally palatable thing. Yep. And, yep. um, yep. hold on, Henry. Hold that oh, it's thought. It's unplugged. It's unplugged. It's my fault. All right. We don't need it. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. But sorry. we had to kind of choose our battle. So every once in a while, like, somebody would say, like, this just doesn't work. Every time we show it, nobody laughs. It's done. But that one with the business card, because I saw that happen at the improv one night. It's like <laughs> one of the comics gave, like, some guy in a suit, you know, it's like, yeah, no, I'm a comic. Here, here's my card. And then the guy literally just, that's great, man. And then gives it back. Like, who wow. gives back your wow. business card? The whole point is it costs two cents <laughs> I thought each. it was hilarious. Wow. And, so uh, like, wow. I mean, <laughs> I started doing move. it as a gag, yeah, to just to piss people off. I wish people still gave business cards because it's a fun thing to do. For no, a, no, no, you keep that. For a while, my business card was just I collected all these cards and I just <laughs> crossed out the names and wrote Ari Shafir and my number. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's a great, great bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> well. Nah, that's okay. Thanks. But yeah, we had to kind of I I had to explain uh, because What'd you fight Carol for? Kravitz. Well, because every time we showed it, nobody got it, and so Greg was like, "Nah, nobody ever laughs at this thing." And then Carol didn't even get it, and I was like, "You know what?" But there's movies like Spinal Tap where you watch it ten times and then you notice this one little thing, and you got to have some of those types of things in there. So I thought maybe this will be one of those things. So I'm glad you brought up that thing. Oh, no, that's cool. it's a great joke. You, you know the story about the uh, Farrelly brothers with the snowball. I don't know. I think you told it to me, but uh, it was just like other people. It was listened. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, do you? Know? Okay, cool, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> it was Dumb and Dumber, and he fucking it's Jeff Goldblum, not Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Daniels. Daniels, Daniels takes yeah. a snow like she throws some snow at him. Oh yeah, yeah, and I he remember that. Unloads in her face. It's fantastic. Yeah, and they had a cut where she's bleeding from the nose, and oh, everybody wow. they showed it to goes no, and they had to keep doing new showings because like no way, that's not. It's not. It's funny if she's not bleeding. And every every <laughs> crowd was like, "Dude, that's too much," and they had to just keep going. Eventually, they're like, "I guess the crowd is right." After like nine shows, they're all <laughs> oh, like, man. "We hate that part." That reminds me of the movie Lost in America. Do you know Lost in America? Oh yeah, yeah. One of the great Turner Sparks podcast films. I feel like you haven't seen anything. No. Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the best, funniest movies of all time, and everyone should know it. It's a great comedy, but. The movie scene podcast. where uh, I did for a while with Gary Marshall, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about Gary Marshall's dad. Uh, I believe so, right? Or no, brother. Oh, is, what? is that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, uh, anyway, so there's a scene where she loses all the like the, the whole thing is there. He's like a corporate money guy, and he decides he's inspired by Easy Rider, and there's a bunch of great gags, and he quits the job, and he's like, they're gonna go live and be you know people like you or whatever, and live in an RV. 
and then she, the first day, his wife gambles all the money away. But there, there was no um, the nest egg scene, which is one of the most famous scenes. He's like, I don't want you to say nest egg. You he went crazy, but they, that scene wasn't in there because when they tested it, everybody hated the wife so much. They're like, this woman's a horrible cunt, and we don't even want to watch this movie. <laughs> She's a piece wow. of shit. And so they had to add a scene where he like undresses her and explains why it's so horrible. Uh, because people were just like, well, oh, fuck her. he should leave this woman. She's yeah. a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyways. You ever That's have a amazing. friend complain, to a, complain about their girlfriend or boyfriend? And you're like, why don't you leave them? They're like, ah, come on, you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Todd Glass told me this story about some friend of his used to always bring his girlfriend to the improv to watch him when he was going up and then she would talk throughout the whole thing oh my and it would piss him off so much she'd get drunk and just talk through his set and you know Todd you know he's just he likes to he control every sleep. single yep. situation uh -huh. he puts candles up makes it look all nice but he talked to the guy a few times and he's uh, the guy's like look I I've told her, but I want to say that she loves you so much. Like, she loves going to your shows. She just, at, you're her favorite comic. Todd's like, all right, but man, tell her to stop talking because it's really. Anyway, they broke up. The guy broke up with his girlfriend, and then he's talking to Todd. And the guy goes, by the way, now that we're broken up, I guess I can tell you. She hated you, man. She hated your comedy. She hated everything. But he's like, what? <laughs> so I'm sitting here putting coming? up with her talking throughout all night. <laughs> she doesn't even like me. <laughs> he's like, no, nah, I was telling you that because I didn't want to tell her to stop talking. But uh... <laughs> That's great. by the way, Todd's Instagram is the funniest oh, thing. Oh, God. On Instagram. No, he's incredible. You haven't seen that either? No. God, consume some I comedy, my I, friend. Oh, I, it's Instagram. Oh, it's amazing. No, he's I, got I'm a whole. I'm, I've been so bad about consuming. Have right. you not seen it at all? No, I see it on Twitter. He yeah. does. Oh yeah, maybe it's on Twitter too. But he does. He's just doing a gag. He does these hilarious gag. It's too hard to explain. But just like this real idiot <laughs> guy who's like telling stories, like right guys, and he's just telling these. And now he's doing a thing where he's an Uber driver. And uh, just check out Todd Glass have, show. He's on incredible. Instagram. Have you funny. seen uh, Todd Glass? Have you seen the Dice Instagrams? No. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes up to people at the airport who don't know who he is, just some like Latino immigrant or something. He goes. Buddy, I can't right now. I know you want the picture, but I'm trying to stay uh, <laughs> trying to stay under the radar. And the guy's like, "What?" He goes, "I, I, can't, buddy, I can't. I just can't. I'll get mobbed." <laughs> He's <still> like, "I'm <laughs> sorry." What? He goes, okay, funny okay, tell you what. I know you want the picture. Meet me over. <laughs> just like, but he knows he's not known. It's so funny. Oh, he just bugs that everybody. Out. That's a good bit. Yeah. So you watch some Instagram? I read that. I read about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch that. You have to like really show it to me on your phone. Yeah, the only way I can funny. get it. He does. A, he does some great. He had, we had one where he's he's basically this this big like fucking idiot talking to his friends, and he told this one story. But he's like, yeah, yeah, I was working at a gas station. And this fucking guy comes up and he goes, hey, give me, uh, fill me up. He's, I'm, I'm desperate. Give me the cheapest. Fill me up with the cheapest thing you got. And then, uh, you know, you try to help a guy out. And then two weeks later, he comes back and he goes, yeah, you destroyed my car. And he goes, yeah, that's what happens when you put diesel into a Toyota Corolla, you dumb fuck. <laughs> and he goes, the lesson, don't try to help anybody. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he does hilarious. a bunch of gags like that. The guy's The lesson is don't try to help anybody. Brilliantly funny guy. Yeah, he, had to, he, he at Montreal used to be so funny. He would like put on a hoodie and he'd be like, I'm a new faces. And he was just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. You got to appreciate people that are doing uh, different stuff with Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. YouTube. Yeah, I never got Instagram rolling. My Instagram just looks like tumbleweeds, just like <laughs> That'd be a desert. Good effect. <laughs> yeah, tumbleweeds roll through yeah, I should do that shot. for real. Just to have like the last twenty videos just be tumbleweeds rolling. You around. can probably get it where a video ends in one, <laughs> and then start time it out. Yeah, yeah. It oh, that would going. be good. Well, I'm such an idiot. I was just doing this recently. I was on the air airplane, like looking at my Instagram feed, because you know, like you, you're just bored. So you're like. Going through my like even like ten months ago, I was still just posting photos of like sunsets and mountains, and I'm like, these all idiots are all putting their <laughs> act on Instagram. It's embarrassing. And then you're just like, every instinct I've ever had in the business is Wrong. just completely <laughs> retarded. I remember having this with Norman, like being like, we're not doing video, we're a podcast. Oh, you don't yeah. videotape a podcast. These people are idiots. And now it's just like standard. Yeah, yeah. Like, no well, one cares about the audio. is it. Is it is now everything both? Because I did always yeah, take both. podcasts in when I didn't have visual, like like on the plane. I, or yeah, that's how it used but, to be. Just yeah. like listening. Radio. I and I still listen to podcasts, but like 
I don't want to watch them, but some people do. Some people like go home, which is yeah, it's mind blowing to me. But they go home, you do both, and sit and like that's their night. Like they put fucking whatever skeptic tank on YouTube and sit and watch it, which is crazy to me. But because the show stinks, <laughs> you would, but they would have missed the whole dog jumping in my lap. And yeah, I think so. Dog you know? Yeah, they, they would have just been at home listening, going, "What the fuck happened? <laughs> what does it mean when he says a dog's jumping in my lap? <laughs> is yeah. a dog sucking off Henry <laughs> Phillips?" <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you guys got dates? You want to do dates real quick before, at the, up at the top? Sure. When will this come out? Let's though? Call it Tuesday. Let's call it this week. Oh, really? Yeah, right, sure. I'm in Salt Lake City, March 31st and April 1st, and um, they're really Those are two taking of... care of me, so please come. Oh, nice. Yeah, Salt Lake City rules. Salt Lake City, and then April 15th, the Wilbur Theater. That's got a couple hundred tickets left, which homecoming. sounds like a homecoming lot of tickets. Show. Yeah, homecoming show. It sounds like a lot of tickets, but I've sold like 800-something. So wow. uh, April 15th, Wilbur. It's my hometown. It would be embarrassing wow. if I don't sell it out. I think Sam just... Did 35 straight weeks there. <laughs> so uh, come to the Wilbur Theater. And then May 4th through the 6th, Tampa Side Splitters, which is my favorite club. Love it. And the week after that, it. Tempe Improv, May 11th through 13th. Nice, nice. You're on the road nice. Road. Well, yeah, well, uh, Friday the 24th, I'm at the Ice House what? in April. Pasadena. Oh, sorry. No, March, 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 March. Are we in March? Yeah, or... March, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I don't want to do a past date, but... No, no. Uh, yeah, a week from... Uh, Pasadena Ice House. Yeah, yeah, Pasadena Ice House. It's my own show. It's in the little room, of course. I like that room. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 9.30. And uh, yeah, we're. Uh, I'm looking really forward to it because I get to be playing in my hometown. And uh, I grew up about 10 minutes away from there. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I started I in New York City, but we moved out when I was a teenager to uh, La Crescenta, California. La Crescenta, that's where Kevin Christie's from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah and uh, uh, and Nick Yusuf. The bowling alley closed yep. though, right? The bowling alley. Well, there's yeah, there was like a hundred year old bowling alley in Montrose. Yeah, I did a like a fake reality show thing there with a bunch of porn stars, and I was the bowling alley manager. How everything's fake in in uh, reality shows. So, oh wow. Yeah, I was the bowl. I had to keep cleaning the bowl the bowling <laughs> balls because like ugh, these fucking porn stars are disgusting. And then after it was fun. They knew who I, they knew. I was just like in on it. And then afterwards, they were just talking about squirting, <laughs> <laughs> like very casual. <laughs> it's like. You guys don't know this is not normal. That's great. Yeah, no, that uh, there's a lot of history there in that little town. Uh, just to finish the plug thing, yeah, though, because yeah. he said Florida. While you're in Florida, I'll be in Key West working with your buddy Tom oh, Dustin. Wow. What a fun room. Uh, May 4th through 6th. May 4th through 6th. That's going to be great. And, uh, yeah, Key West, Skater always a good season. time. Nobody ever goes. <laughs> I loved it. You know, but, uh, I mean, yeah. but what I mean is, like, when you plug it, it's just like people, it doesn't matter who's going to be, right. you right. know, who's, like, who's, go by. who's either listening in Key West or listening from some regular place and going there. But anyway, if anybody's yeah. listening in Key West, make sure to tell Henry. Yeah, yeah. You, you heard about it. But, from uh, us. but it's always a blast. Yeah. Have you done that room? Tom I just Dustin's? did it. Oh, great. Oh, we were there it. together. How could you me, not? Yeah. I mean, kayaking like the next day. I stayed for a whole week through. What is it called? The mangroves or the whatever. Mangroves, yeah. 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 Which is a great name for a gay bar in Florida. Mangroves. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. That's, of course it is. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> man anything. It was a good man anything. Yeah. yeah. Man yeah. butter. Man. Man tits. The, uh, the, uh, blue, the blue uh oyster? Cult? The, no. No, blue that oyster. is that uh police academy? Yeah. Yeah. It was just the standard Love that if you reference. went in there, you were going to get raped. Oh that wait, was the fear. Wait, is that like, a real place? No. no oh, okay. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, just a police. Oh, I, just gay bars and movies. Yeah, they in went general. in the door closed. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> and like, there was no way they were gonna overpower this cop and yeah. take him. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? We didn't know anything about gays. That's so funny. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. They're like, oh my god, we're in a gay bar. Like, <laughs> well, that has to be the funniest thing, like non-attempted humor that's happened in the recent years that Kevin Spacey gets busted as like taking advantage of young men he's like you got me i gotta come out of the closet i'm gay <laughs> like, <laughs> i guess that, that's gonna excuse just like <laughs> masturbating on children or whatever the fuck yeah, he's yeah. doing dude what it was he had this trump card <laughs> rating and then things passed where it's no longer a big deal but he was like no i've been having this trump card wait no where did it go right it right. was like saying you have a j get out of jail free card you know those uh those cards that show a friend of the police force yeah, PB, you know, PBR. Yeah, and then PB... suddenly it was like, there's a revolution. You're like, I got the PBR. <laughs> like, that doesn't work. <laughs> PBA. We're, we're hanging dissidents. We're, that doesn't work anymore. By the way, I have one of those. Really? Yeah. Have you ever used it? No, I just got it. And I don't really, I'm not really a lawbreaker, but it's exciting <laughs> it's to have. It's you're speeding or something. What is it? It's a... The PBA, it's like the P Police Benevolent Association. Oh. And it's like kind of like a, uh, like a, he's cool thing. I mm. turned the other way when I saw a fucking uh, immigrant getting patted down. 
Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> <And you're> like, <laughs> cool. Gotcha. <laughs> so you kind of, I think you like. It's, I think if you get pulled over, you like show your license and the car. Is but there I'm a like, limit so... to what you can get? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple <laughs> murders. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need two of these cards. Like, got... <laughs> How many of these do you need? <laughs> yeah. But it's supposedly... pretty much a prepaid bribe. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird, uh, but it's exciting. <laughs> but I had that. I, I used to bartend at a cop bar when I was a teenager. It was like you know a bar for police man. I remember like them being like, have your shift drink. And I was like, well, I'm underage and, and driving. And they were like, dude, you're with us. And I remember at one point they were like, what towns do you drive through to get home? And I was like, uh, Stoughton, Brockton, and Whitman. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're fine. We know all the guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it was like a window into like, and that's like the worst corruption in police Yeah, I history. never liked that where it's like, that cop was cool. He let me go when I was drunk driving. It's like, no, that's, that's actually not, that's just putting everyone else in danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let nah. me go when I was jaywalking or yeah. something, but not I like. I killed a bunch of like, people, yeah, but still. Gotta drive slow, kids. No, it's cool. The Don't other people that bad. this, when I was in uh, Buffalo, New York, I was opening for a band. It was one of those like all-star bands. It had uh, Chris Novacello from Nirvana. Oh, wow. No, um, but it was during that era. And then uh, Kirk Kirkwood from the Meat Puppets. And there oh, was wow. the drummer from Sublime. But uh, they were great guys. I partied with them a bunch. I uh, went up at the shows, and it was like literally the first six rows were the only ones I could see, and then it turned into blackness, and it was just all people going, fuck you, (laughs) fuck you so hard, dude, fuck. Like they wanted to kill me. And then I'd get off stage, and those guys in the band were like, that was great, man, that was good. I'm like, that was... (laughs) Do you guys deal with this every day? (laughs) Yeah. So... uh, but I remember us going to a bar afterward, just a classic, you know, Irish pub or something in the neighborhood, and we're just sitting in a booth in the back, and those guys let me party with them, and I was drinking like crazy, like I always do, and then uh, I kept uh, Chris Novacelic from Nirvana, kept going back and from the jukebox and playing Black Sabbath songs, and we're talking. I was like having the time of my life. I was like, this is really cool. And then the uh, the bartender's like, last call. And then I was walking out of the bathroom. The guy's like, got to wrap it up, man. Last call. And I go, okay. And then I go back to those guys, the rock stars sitting at the booth. And they're all just sitting there casual like they had full beers and everything. I was like, uh, yeah, guys, uh, bad news. Uh, we got to go. <laughs> guess it's time. And they're, they stared at me like I was from another planet. They're like, what is this kid? Is he five years old? Like, what are you talking about? They've probably never heard anybody say, hey, guys, we got to wrap it up. They're closing up. And sure enough, they close all the doors. And even the cops came by and they're like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, we got a rock band in there. And we just stayed as long as we ever. Oh, that's that great. Like, they must have been like, "Yeah, wow, he's adorable, isn't he? He just thinks that we're gonna get kicked out of a bar, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's never happened." I heard stories of um of uh who's the I get no respect guy, Ronnie Dangerfield, Ronnie yeah. Dangerfield yeah. smoking weed in restaurants in L.A. This is, I mean, like twenty years ago when yeah. totally illegal and cops coming over and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing, officer? Nice <laughs> to meet you." <laughs> just like not even a thought to put oh, this yeah. out. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> Tell your story about the the band you met at the improv. Recently. Oh yeah, I've God, that's that embarrassing. One. You mean the Killers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You met the Killers. But well, that's the yeah, the greatest. Nick, ah, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> did I really just give the punchline? I feel like so. Well, I did, I did, but it. it's still a fun story. It's still I guess. a fun story. It's like, but... yeah, fuck. All right, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I've heard the story. You did give it away for the art. Well, I'll just tell it real quick then and <laughs> yeah, take yeah. all the fun out of it. But uh, <laughs> it'll be like a saggy balloon. But. uh no, Nick Every Swartzen. woman listener will be like, no, that's how you tell a story. <laughs> I'm like, Sa- yeah. Sarah does that a lot, too. I'll be like, she's like, tell the joke with the, the blind guy who <laughs> reveals that he's gay. And I'm like, all right. Well, that's <laughs> well no, it, it, Nick Swartzen uh, got to be friends with the killers. He brought them all down. Greatest um, rock band in America. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, I I was standing there, and I was drunk, of course, at the improv. And uh, there's probably a pattern with all my stories. and uh, <laughs> But... Uh, I'm talking to uh, the part I normally don't reveal, but uh, to the singer from <laughs> The Killers, Brandon Flowers, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, this story makes him look really good. It makes me look terrible. But he he was just this nice, quiet dude. And I was just all dry. I was like, oh, what do you uh, what do? You do? And he's like, <laughs> oh, we're in a band. We got a band. That's awesome. Now, I did that grind. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Fucking eating Taco Bell out of the back seat of your car and going to shithole gigs. I mean, I remember we did one gig like in near San Francisco where like the keyboardist, we lost him at one point because he traded his shirt with a, 
guy who wanted to get into the show, like all the shit. And the, and the guy's just sitting there listening to me for the longest time. So I told him all these nightmare stories and about how shitty it is to be a musician. But anyway, so that's cool. So you guys like, what's your name or whatever? And the guy's like, uh, it's the killers. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, that's, I've already heard, I think there's another band called that or something. And he's like, no, I think that's probably us. And I'm like, oh, oh, so you're, oh, wow. Okay. Wow. That's awesome, man. And then I just like walked away. Like that guy just, I mean, he wins the patience award because I must've just stunk of beer. And... You know, stop for talking about it. No. But he I was yeah, he was so yeah the guy was so friendly like that's he's just right. sort of listening Christian and just, Christians are always yeah. nice I guess that's it Mormon too right Mormon yeah, yeah. that's yeah. weird that was like we're going to see White Reaper tonight we were talking White about it last Reaper! night Ooh, have an album too late I'm looking forward to this I don't know anything about them they're no, just they, rock and roll they dude. kick you, ass, American yeah. rock and roll nice yeah, it's kind of like power pop uh, very, From very cheap trick yeah they remind me of a, like a cheap trick I can see that a little bit I can see that kind of like power pop cheap trick yeah. And uh, they're great, but it's funny because they're like, they know us, and we're like, to me, I'm like, there's these rock and roll guys. I'm like, we're going to see this rock band, but like, we have more followers than them. It's weird. I played that but, album. They wow. sent me that album. I played it on loop for a while. But we were saying, I'm like, well, I was saying that to Ari. I was like, isn't it weird that we're like bigger than them? And then you were like, yeah, but they're like a lot cooler. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, much yeah, cooler. Yeah, no, that's us. Like, they're like swimming in pussy. They're like yeah. hot guys playing yeah, rock yeah, and roll. Yeah. We're bigger than them, like, like, like Ira Glass is bigger than us. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, fuck off, nerd. But they like, they <laughs> they toured Pearl uh, Europe with Pearl Jam, and uh, they're playing all these huge festivals. Damn, that's so cool. Yeah, they fucking kick yeah, ass. I'm looking forward to this. By yeah, the way, I'll we're be, the oldest ones we will by, be the far. Oldest by yeah. far. Oh. Is Nude Party opening again? I'm used to no, now. I'm just so. the oldest person in every room that I go into <laughs> now. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are there because I would be the oldest, but you guys. Oh yeah, no, really. I, Joe yeah. made a mistake of telling everybody who follows him that he loves his band, and then every, now it's just like, "Hey, Joe, how you doing?" Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're all going to show up. Yeah. You mean? Yeah. But it's nice because they're older too. Because I feel like my audience is older, so then they come, and so it's like, "Okay, great." There's a bunch of guys in their 40s. Yeah, here. Yeah, but they're, like they respect respect your privacy. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're I think so. They say hello. Yeah. yeah, they're not like moshing with us. I don't think. We're washing tonight. You think we're gonna mosh tonight? Uh, I don't, I'm not I don't a big know. mosh guy. I might, uh, but it is like you do want to go in there. It seems fun. Sometimes they get a little too, a little too Luis Gomez, if you know my. Well, trip. but also Sweet you're like, punches. I'm oh, wow. Shows. But I'm like, we're too old. Like it's like embarrassing. You're not supposed to be in there. I don't think they're like 23 years old. Yeah, you might pit. break your. Can head? I show you Kevin Christie? Where me and him were, went to see uh, Andrew WK. Remember him? This, yeah. Oh, height. yeah, yeah. Yeah, party hard and whatever. It's all about blow and fucking New York and fun. And we were like, let's go fucking throw down in the mosh pit. We both had glass. Can I borrow your glass for a second? I swear I won't do anything to him. And, um, and we both had <laughs> glasses sucks on. already. I and he goes, uh, he goes, let's go, let's go. And we took three steps. He goes, oh, wait. And we both went. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. perfect. Yeah. I, I hated moshing because with, with the first era of mosh, I was like a kid. I was like a teenager. So they would be like, the mosh would open up, and I'm like, this sucks. I'm like trying to watch no. the band. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of like went Never away. Changed. And so now it's like back, like, oh, this is what our parents did. Yeah. And I'm like, well, now I'm old. I guess I did a version of moshing in the 80s. I went to the Triumph concert. Triumph the was. Uh, no, no. Oh. This was uh, this was the. <laughs> The Canadian prog rock trio that wasn't Rush, but it was Triumph. Rush rules. And uh, I was a big fan. I was uh, I was on the floor at the Forum, where you performed, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. You, yeah, you were on the same stage, which is a better story than the one I'm telling, but I want to finish it anyway. No, <laughs> but uh, so I was like, I couldn't see anything. I was on the floor, and then everybody was standing up. So I'm like, and I always had this theory, like, if everybody sits down, we're all good, but... Once one guy stands, now yeah. we all have to stand. Yeah. And then cool some guy everybody. stood on the chair. Aww. So now I got to stand on my chair. But then I couldn't see anything because people were taller. So I actually literally would like put, there were, uh, we had arms on the chairs and I put my feet on the arms of the chair, but I'm balancing and I'm realizing this is a really flimsy thing. Yeah. And while I'm doing that, I just feel a giant foot on my back and i went flying like four people <laughs> somebody must have just been like fuck you man he sized like, you up too i just went boom. <laughs> he was like i'm gonna do it you think i showed the guy's like nah. i just pushed it one that yeah. pushed the arms race like one too nah, high yeah, and then it was yeah. Really, really by the way i'll be at the beacon theater this friday march 24th 
Very excited. Homecoming show. Sit down in your seats by 8 o'clock, 8.05. It's going to be a fun opening. Uh, don't be in the fucking beer gardens. But sneak in, booze, if you got to do anything. Nice. Where uh, Where's Beacon Theater? Shop it. In New York City. Nice. Yeah. We New did. That's City. where we premiered the movie. Yeah. I've seen you oh. there. I've seen the first song of Sturgill Simpson after Billy Wayne Davis opened. And, and then I had to go do spots. And, uh, and Nate? We were, you were at Nate? Nate and Jordan, Jordan Peterson with Tim Dillon before Tim was Tim. Anyway, I'll be there and I'll be in Zurich on the March 28th. And then I got a whole UK and European tour in April and May. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Today's episode of Ari Shavir Skeptic is brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com. If you use promo code Ari right now at checkout, um, you get 20% off your order. That's right. Yep. 20% off your order. 20%. That's higher than anybody gives. Let me tell you about Sheath Underwear. Am I wearing them now? Please say yeah. Yes. Guys, Sheath Underwear. First of all, I love the boxer briefs. Here's a funny thing. See this little pouch? See it? Pouch? There's a hidden compartment in here. We met the owner of Sheath Underwear at uh, the Comedy Club Green Room in Denver, Colorado. Um, Mr. Patton, General Patton, let's call him. And he showed, uh, I was trying to explain to Brian Simpson who was there how Sheath Underwear works. Well, it works by separating your balls from your fucking sides of your fucking legs. It's great. It's great. Especially when you're on a hike and you don't want to fucking chafe the shit out of them. I have a story. Maybe I'll say for um, you be tripping. It's still in the works. Um, about hiking in Guatemala and having some fucking serious chafe going on. And they're this fucking, you know, I got fucking long balls, dude. I got long balls and they fucking stick, especially sweaty. They stick to the sides of my fucking legs and they fucking chafe. Now, nothing helps with the fucking uh, uh, hemorrhoids that are fucking rubbing together and leaking. Sometimes I leak fucking shit booze. I make a sweet shit booze and it comes out of my butt. Here's the problem with sheath underwear. Here's the only problem with it, by the way. Uh, use promo code Ari at checkout. Sheathunderwear.com and get 20% off your order. That's one-fifth. I can do math when it's about money. Um, here's the problem. I was in Key West, Florida with Joe List. And um, we overlapped by a few days. Hung out. It was great. He, in his travel bag, has sheath underwear. They have the same designs I have. We all share that, you know, there's like 10 designs. There's some good ones. It's like 10 designs. Oh, also the sheath. I, dude, uh, Pat, I've been using these uh, those sheath underwear things. Um, the t-shirts you sent me for skiing, the fucking bamboo, they stretch and breathe. I don't know if that's what they're for, but I use them underneath my uh, long johns for skiing. That's neither here nor there. The problem is Joe and I have currently, and probably I'm assuming a lot of other comedians, have the same color underwear. And I looked at it, that's that thought, you know, when you see underwear, you're like, oh, is that mine? It's like, you know, if you have a shirt, is that mine? Or if you see money, oh, that's mine. I had a 20. Is that my 20? And I saw it and I was like, oh, those are my underwear. And he goes, no. And I wasn't sure. And so it became a bit of an argument. I'm like, my stuff's here too. How do you know? My stuff's in the middle of the room. So what we did was we had an old fashioned cockfight. I pulled down my spare pair of sheath and he pulled down his. And we just slapped hard dicks against each other. They wobbled. It was like a sword fight with a wobbly sword. And they wobbled around each other. And we just fucking slapped dick, slapped dick, slapped dick, slapped dick. Our dicks were uh, uh, not sweaty because they'd been locked in our second pair of sheath underwear pouches. And we just slapped soft dick, slapped soft dick, slapped soft dicks. Neither one of us got hard. Imply into that, uh, whatever you want. But neither one of us got hard. We just slapped dick, slapped dick. He got me once in the head really good, and it stung. I think I got him a couple times, but I'm not sure. If I could have used my balls, I would have had a clear advantage. But just dick on dick? No one knew who won. And so we dick slapped over these sheath underwear until eventually our dicks became entangled like, like a Uruburos. Is that right? A king rat. That's it. Where seven or eight rats get their fucking tails tangled up and then they all starve to death. No one knows how to move. And that's what Joe and I did uh, with our dicks in Key West, Florida. So we were stuck. So what we had to do is get a 63-year-old day drunk lady to come and fucking unhook our dicks she was getting ready for a jimmy buffett concert and she goes i don't have time for this and we're like what else are you doing and she's like good point so we kind of walked in there imagine joe like here i'm um, here and we just kind of walk sideways up to this lady in line for jimmy buffett and we said can you untangle our soft dicks and she said yes and she started working them and then as she was doing it, she goes what are these underwear and we were both at the same time go it's funny you ask because that's the reason we're in this predicament our sheath underwear and she untangles our dicks joe lists and mine um uh, and then she was like, oh, good luck to you, boys. Because um, we're boys. She's a 63-year-old day drunk Jimmy Buffett fan. And we said, thanks a lot, ma'am. Really appreciate that. And we went off 
and we decided they were his sheath underwear. Uh, I realized I had this. I had my pair that looked the same uh, in my bag still. So we didn't really even need to fight in the first place. But it was a good time, and me and my friend Joe got closer together in ways we never thought possible by slapping and getting our dicks entangled. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use promo code Ari for 20% off your order. And you can get your dicks tangled with your friends too. I'm Ari Shafir, and I'm a legend. You'll be a legend with Sheath. Now back to the episode. Um... Damn, yeah, I, I know that feeling. We had in Bonnaroo, some lady was sitting up on the stanchions, you know? And yeah. She was standing up there to see it. was like, hey, come on, sit down. She goes, fuck yeah. You know, doing that <laughs> thing of like that white lady thing. Fuck yeah. And then everyone started booing. And then her friend's like, no, what, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> she got out. Oh, I had an no, embarrassing. You're in the wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. I had an embarrassing moment that I cringe at now, now that I'm, uh, you know, in my late 70s. But I, I went and saw a Steve Miller band, which is like everyone had to do when you're a teenager. It's like, I don't know anyone who didn't see Steve Joker. Miller. So we went, but it, it wasn't like an outdoor show. It was at the Orpheum Theater. I would have thought you'd be too young for Steve Miller. No, well, I'm a, I was a, a huge classic rock guy. And yeah, he got a lot of I'm, play. I'm an old, doesn't hold up. I I'm never an liked old it soul. even then. But um, that was just like something you did. So we went, and this was like 97. So I was 14 years old at the Orpheum Theater. So it's a theater show. And then uh, I'm sitting there, and we're like 40 years younger than everybody and I stood up and I was like, come on, this is a rock and roll show. <laughs> Everybody up. And I'm like doing this thing. And they're all like, what? And I was like, let's go, rock and roll, baby. <laughs> and so I just started standing and like literally nobody else got up. And like now I look back, I'm like, if I went and saw like Jackson Brown or whatever and some 11 year old kid was like, everyone up. You're like, no, you <laughs> this fucking is how idiot. You do it. Like, fuck I'm you. like, <laughs> Stop it. Everyone's like, we got bad backs and shit. Oh, it was so embarrassing. That's my least favorite thing about rock and roll now is these assigned seats. It's supposed to be a, just a fucking standing room pit. But don't you? You're 75 years old. I know, but I do. I like the massive exaggeration. I'm like, yeah. happy that there's the. I feel bad. I'm always calling Ari 51, and he's actually like 49, so it's weird. <laughs> but also, I'm 53, so I'm older than your insult. I know, but it's funny to insult someone just, just a couple slightly. years older. Oh, yeah, no. I to be like, yeah, what are you, 60? Is like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm no, not. But it's close. funny to be like, what are you, 54? <laughs> yeah, if you call someone 180, you're it's like, like, okay, it's a fucking like, ridiculous. No, but I almost am that age. <laughs> I will by the time this podcast comes out. But also, I feel like you're not mo going to mosh, where he's like an asshole no. doing ayahuasca but then, but then and moshing. Like, it should be seats. Like, I saw Arcade Fire at United Center, and it was just like all the floors all standing, and all the seats were, went up. So buy those seats. Yeah, yeah. I like Arcade But there's Fire. these tiny little areas where you can stand up, like Guns N' Roses. You should be standing for this. But I think... It's not Band of Horses. I, I, I understand. That is kind of weird. Like, there was never assigned seating at those types of shows. Yeah, it was an $18 yeah. ticket at, like, The Smell or some shit like that. Yeah. And then, like... You're just there. Yeah. Uh, I understand the smell. What is that in your asshole? <laughs> got him. Uh, I understand, but it's like, Attack. as you Attack. get older, it's like people, this is what happens with GA is like general admission is like you're sitting there and then you're like, they are camped out for 45 minutes. And then as the show starts, some fucking fat asshole just squeezes in. You're like, it's like, no, no, no. I had space. I had space for a reason. I'm like, yeah. well, do space. Come on, darling. <laughs> and I'm like, my lower back hurts. And also it's like, when you're young, like during the encores, you're like standing, like yeah. <laughs> now I go to see like Pearl Jam and Springsteen. Like the moment they're like good night, you sit and rest. <laughs> like there's no like clapping until they like, come. We're out. gonna be part of this, bringing them back. Yeah, yeah. You're just like all right, let's just rest here. Dude, I went to see LCD Sound System with Soda and his girlfriend, and he took off like right before the end of the before the intermission, before yeah, the encore. And I was like, where are you going? Like, I gotta take a dump. I'm like, what? <laughs> a dump? Because I've been ordering a lot of McDonald's. I, I've been I, for, on delivery too, so cold McDonald's. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And so then I'm just there in the encore by myself, and they start singing like, where are your friends tonight? <laughs> I'm like, they're taking dumps. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. They were here. <laughs> oh, having to shit during rock and roll I is really- shit before oh, you go. Worse. I also, well, this is a classic old guy thing to do. I went, the last concert I went to- I thought I was being all smart and I had these because it was so freaking loud and I was in the front and we were in the front and I had uh, some tissue toilet paper and this is something I've done on the plane too where like I if I don't have earphones this is so stupid but I'd roll it up real small and then I'd put it in my oh yeah smart yeah, I'd use it as as like and it works you know and so I was there so my friend was like dude what are you doing you got toilet paper in your freaking ears you're a mess and i was like whatever and uh, at <laughs> least i'm not gonna ruin the joke will be on you when i don't ruin my ears you know and then at, at one point one of the little pieces of tissue paper came down fell and then i picked up 
something that was next to it that wasn't the tissue oh. paper, and I put it in my ear. It was like a cigarette butt or oh. something. Oh. And it was one of those things that if it was, like, oh. if it was just me, I would have been like, oh, shit. But my friend saw it and was like, did you just put, like, a piece of trash <laughs> in your fucking ear? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hey man, I'm still smart uh, for doing this. Oh, that's great. White Reaper, by the way, can be very loud. We saw that. Sarah very and I loud. one time we realized we were sitting, we just stood in a weird spot. We saw them in Asbury Park, oh. and uh, it was awesome. But we were like the first song, like we were just like next to the monitor, and it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. and well, I was like, gotta we got like we had to go and buy uh, ear Close. protection. But then we realized when we moved to the center of the room, it was like much much better. But. Uh, you gotta be careful. There's a comic uh, in Nashville, Frankie uh, Harris, who uh, his uh, frat brothers thought that they were doing a fun prank to him, like at a oh, big Jesus. party or something like that. And he passed out early, and they dragged him and put him right in front of a speaker. And he's never been able to hear out of this ear that's since it, then. That is a good prank. It is, you know. Yeah, it's like it's the, that's I'm the one that keeps giving. I'm not saying that it know? wasn't uncool, but it, I mean, when it comes to prank, no, I mean, this is Frankie said that he's a great guy, great comic too. But um, anyway, so don't don't we do saw, that. We saw Ralphie at Bonnaroo. Let's keep bringing up Bonnaroo, but he was like, like headed to where he ended up <laughs> oh he yeah was just like passed out right next to a speaker while a band's on oh yeah just in a diabetic coma and then <laughs> it was just no, like i mean to wake him up i mean like man he doesn't have much longer does he and it was about two years oh geez yeah no every time i think about that frankie story i'm like i gotta be careful when i go to these freaking places yeah, yeah. we should go to cvs or whatever I, I thought that too i'm like because airpods are like good but then it just looks like you're listening to a different band yeah. AirPods aren't quite good enough but aren't they? They're like noise canceling, right? Yeah, true. Some of them like the actual, but then you can't really get the base of the song. Sometimes it's hard. Well, just some find sh- some tissue paper from the back. Yeah, yeah, a couple work. cigarette butts. <laughs> don't don't let the <laughs> don't let the hearing aid industry know that there's such an easy hack though. They charge two thousand dollars for that stuff. <laughs> That's, yeah, I you know, know what I heard about Martin Scarelli. You know the guy who made the oh yeah yeah AIDS, Scarelli AIDS yeah medication like super expensive. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I watched that doc. You watched it, yeah, yeah. That was like some I stuff didn't I didn't see find the doc. out. It was like there was a generic version that you can get for like forty cents a pill. Oh, it was, is that right? Yeah, it was just for if you wanted the like like the name brand, and also even the name brand, we had a, a hotline that said if you can't afford it, we would just send you something for free. And then everyone was like, "You're a fucking cunt. People are dying." He's <laughs> like, "Yeah, I know. Get the generic." <laughs> it was like I don't want to hear that. Um, yeah, he that, he that guy he had a little bit of an unlikable thing going on because early I, Andrew Tate. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. I remember correctly, it was already owned by some like traditional old asshole, and he just bought it. But he's like the young guy who gets in the media. You should and give stuff. it out. It's like, you yeah. should buy it and give it to everybody. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, how is that going to work? Um, I did a clever move where I made my lap smaller so Bandit wouldn't sit on it. Got it. Although she was sitting on my lap earlier, so oh, an old dog asshole in the face. <laughs> Good job, Bandit. There you go. Stretch it out. Don't definitely take your time getting off the chair. Really milk it. We're doing a podcast, bro. This is how I pay your fucking milk bones. <laughs> Isn't it funny when like a dog does downward dog and you're like, oh, there it is. Dude, that's he right. would always do it when I'm when I'm doing yoga. He'll come over and like oh, jump in your face. That's really sweet. Um, can you gently open that door, but not too wide where it's going to mess up the camera? Oh, to let him out? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. There we go. Get out of here, you fucking dog. Um, so do you get do you guys get harassed like in public ever for for being you? I mean, I'm talking about for being the comedian harassed. that you are, not just for being you. You mean like harass like like uh, by you fans, harassed, yeah, or, like, or something hey. like that. Well, yeah, I remember like I in, assume you do all the yeah, time. Yeah, I was I was me. walking I'm home a nice from, the, guy. from the cellar <laughs> and unsuccessful also. <laughs> and but I don't mean harassed. I mean just like, hey man, I'm <laughs> such a big. This guy dude. started yelling at me. I was walking home from the cellar. He's like, "That's my fucking business. Don't piss on that fucking door." And then I had to keep going. <laughs> Um, I that remember was a bit, right? it was a bit. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to confirm. Uh, Ari was doing a bit. In uh... <laughs> you could put a graphic up saying "bit coming" <laughs> right, before that. That'd be great. I uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, like it, it, it's naturally going to attract like the worst people ever because there's probably a bunch of cool people. Uh, like I, I remember like being at the improv. If there was a famous guy hanging out at the bar, like Craig Robinson would be there a lot or whatever, and it's like. Probably everybody's cool, and and actually Seinfeld was one there one time too. But 
it filtered out all the cool people and only the people who have like incredible balls would go up and be like, oh man, let's yeah, hang out. Yeah. I want to do a drink. Let's do a shot. Let's do this and that it's and everything wild like that. It's wild to go up like, to someone you don't know and be like, let's it's do just this. It's insane. Here's my chance. What, what are we doing tonight? It's just, it's crazy. Oh man. I have seen people do it to the super famous people. I'm like, are you <laughs> out of your mind? Even if it's someone I love, we saw, um, fuck, the curly hair one from South Park. I don't know. Matt Stone or Trey Mo? Parker? I think Matt Stone. South Park. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember cartoon. which one's which. Yeah, but the curly hair one. Matt Stone, I think. Yeah, right. and we saw him at Louis' uh, garden thing, and me and Shane were like, what? And Shane's like, should we say something? I'm like, I don't have that in me, dude. You can go. <laughs> and he did. He shook his hand. He said, big fan. But I'm like, how do you even do that? What? Well, what about pictures? Like, I, I have uh, very few of these pictures, but the ones that I do have, I, I was enough of an asshole. Like I have one with me and Lemmy. Nice. Um, cool. that from rainbow I have, bar. Yeah. From that very spot. And I'm what, sure I pissed him rainbow? off. Yeah. Like I, I was the asshole who asked him to take a picture. He looks very pissed off, but here we are years later. Lemmy is no longer with us. I have a picture of me and Lemmy. Yeah. But th there's two philosophies. There's like, well, I don't want to ruin the moment. I don't want to. Um, but then again, having that picture, is pretty fun to have. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I got to hang out with Paul McCartney, and I didn't ask, but you're like, because you want to be cool. Yeah. But then you're also like, it would be really cool. Yeah. To have a photo with Paul. I know. McCartney. I mean, eventually he'll be dead, and you'll be out there with a picture yeah. of you and him. I might die before him. But I was at by Roger the way, Waters. nice, nice job. Uh, Not asking. overshadowing me with my uh, yeah. Lemmy. Yeah. You just pulled I out met, the uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I know, we like we like hung out too. You had a beetle. Yeah. No. I met Jesus one time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Is that true? No. And I asked I asked Roger Waters for an autograph on the Roger Waters ticket, and I, but I was so nervous, and I was like, got a pen, but it was had unscrewed a little in my pocket, so I gave it to him. I was like, oh shit, like I messed it up, and I went to screw. He goes, I know how to use a fucking pen. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it! <laughs> and then it got way worse. Well, I've oh, told, man. I'm sure I've told you, and I've told it on many podcasts, so I apologize to the repeats, but here comes my Philip Seymour Hoffman story. You can fast forward if you've heard me tell it, but I don't know if I've told you the story, but I was. I love it. I was drunk. This is way back. This is 2003. Can we get a sound graphic to Here Comes the Philip Seymour Hoffman story? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I feel like I've, I've never heard it. I've just, I mean, I can't wait to hear it. I feel like I've told it on uh, your podcast, maybe. But I, so I was drunk, and I walked up to Philip Seymour Hoffman. He was at a bar talking to like a beautiful woman and I kind of just like did the thing where I just made my my presence <laughs> known. <laughs> it's like so embarrassing and like they, they like clearly tried to talk through it and after uh. a while we're like all right so let this is your turn to say something <laughs> and I opened with the only true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone when you're uncool and then he went uh yeah and I was like that's from almost famous you say that in almost famous and he goes, yep. And then I could tell it wasn't going well. I was like, oh, shit. I thought like he would think this was something. I don't know. I was a fucking idiot. I was 21 and drunk. And so I went, uh, I'm friends with Patrice O'Neill, which I was you not. Said that? Yeah, oh, wow. I said that, which I was not. Wow. And then he said, I don't know who that is. Wow. <laughs> and I went, oh, he's in 25th hour with you. And he went, okay. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and uh, at the time, I did not know Patrice at all. Uh -huh. And I just had to slowly do like the fucking moonwalk back to my table. Uh -huh. But I was with my buddy, and I was like, dude, that was great. Yeah. I just pretended it went well. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. I just talked to him. But I thought it would be a good idea to say a line from a movie. I'm glad it was guy. the line. Like, how awkward would that have been if he's like, it wasn't me, dude. I'm <laughs> thinking of Steve McQueen. <laughs> dude, I, I'm, in, I'm in Guatemala at some fucking regional festival. And the guy, was an Australian guy I'm hanging out with. He he's, looks across there's these indigenous people doing some fucking sacrifice, a fucking their baby or something. And then uh, he look, he's like, "Hey, do you watch the show Hacks?" And I'm like, N "No." He goes, "I think that's the guy from Hacks." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Okay." He goes, "Look at him, isn't that him?" I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't watch that show. And he goes, "I think that's him." And I'm like, "Okay." And then we go back to watching this fucking thing, festival thing. He goes, "I should say something to him." I'm like, "I guarantee you should not." He goes, he'll want me to say something. I'm like, I know he won't. He's in Guatemala in a small town. <laughs> and then he goes, and he goes, I'll say, I'll say, uh, I'll call him by his character name. <laughs> like it's, it's, oh, that's... He's not gonna enjoy it. He wants to be alone right now. He didn't say anything, but the next day he's like, I regret not saying anything. <laughs> like, you were never gonna say anything nice. He wouldn't have been happy. Do you get Kobe shit ever? Still, his wife calls him. We've had like an on and again, off again thing. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, does anyone ever go, hey, fuck you? In person, it's never happened. One never. time, one guy saw everybody around him at the cellar, at the cellar bar, and was like, oh, I'll say something because people are watching me. 
but like, no, nah, no, well, never. Did you guys ever? Line. This this is a, a related story. Um, the this is a story. I believe it was in uh, Wichita at the Looney Bin there, and um, when I went there, it had happened a couple of weeks prior. But they said, yeah, now we had a, a thing where uh, Jimmy Walker, uh, Jimmy? yeah was uh, coming to the club, and apparently he's got in his rider nobody, whether they're in the staff or any uh, any of the people, nobody can say dynamite. dynamite. Yeah, you can't ask him to do dynamite. And uh, so, <laughs> so funny. yeah, so apparently, uh, like, the guy who normally picks people up at the airport, like, woke up extremely hungover or just, like, deathly ill, and he's just like, fuck, man, I got to go to the airport to pick up Jimmy Walker, and... I can't do it. And he tells his roommate, can you go to the airport and pick up the comic this week? Uh, and uh, <laughs> the guy's like, yeah, absolutely. Has no idea. You can see where this is going a mile away, but it has no idea. And Jimmy Walker gets in. And the, the driver this guy Brandon just Flowers. immediately, oh, my God. Hey, you got to say it, man. Dynamite. <laughs> you and the, say it. he must have been like, what in the fuck? That's like, <laughs> literally the first guy I met at this place. <laughs> <laughs> Must have pissed him off so hard. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I love those legends. I get recognized sometimes, but never uh, insane. But I did have this story. It's never that bad. That happened. Uh, yeah, people are usually extremely nice, but I did have this happen uh, recently. Where I was at, I went to see Brandy Carlisle. Do you know the musician Brandy Carlisle? I uh, yeah, I do. She's yeah. great. I'm yeah, a big she's fan. She's Really big with the rest of you dykes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she um, she's a huge. Amongst uh, gay women, particularly, and gay men. So we went to the show, and I brought my dad and my sister and my niece, and then we were to stand there, the opening act was on, and my dad doesn't know much about her, so he was just like, God, there's a lot of lesbians here. And I was like, oh yeah, that's like her group. And then I was like, I imagine like we're two of like 5% straight men, because it's all lesbians and yeah. then like gay men also. And so then we were trying to like do the math of like how many straight men look like they're with their wives or whatever. So we were kind of like, is he gay? And this is maybe this is bad or whatever. But we were like, that guy looks gay. That's that's a gay couple. <laughs> this is straight. And then so we call our fans Tuesdays with stories. Two's gays. And so fans will just be like, I'm gay. So as we're literally <laughs> doing this, we're like, is this guy straight? He's straight. That's a gay guy. We're counting, and a guy walks by literally and just goes. I'm gay. My dad is like, <laughs> what? Like, oh, that, it was like the most unbelievable coincidence that we're trying to decipher who's straight and gay, and a like man your, literally like walks your, by and points right at me and goes, I'm gay. Like in your dad's Fantastic. mind, that guy just knew what you were doing. Yeah. Like, uh, let me stop you one. I'm a gay. It was like unbelievable. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, what? And I was like, that. Ah, that's my podcast. Thing. But it was perfect. It's that in Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> that's my life. Yeah, I Chipotle. remember uh, when I was... When I just turned 18, I started going to the nude joints in L.A. I think that was the age that you could finally do it. And uh, some friend of mine asked me uh, if I wanted to go. There's There was used to be a huge one, nudes, 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 like right oh, out yeah. the airport. And it, it was just like you just when you're a teenager, you're just like, I got to know what happens at nudes, nudes, <laughs> nudes. I have a guess, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so I went in there uh, with my friend Rob and uh we loved it, you know, we saw naked chicks and everything, and then at one point, like, I started talking to one of the dancers, and the dancer was like, what's your name? And I said, Henry, and she goes, I'm going to do a song for you, and then she, she puts on a song called Dance With Me, Henry, which was like a 50s, oh. like an old song, Dance With Me, Henry, whatever, and she strips naked to it, I'm like, yeah, that was great. <laughs> the next day... I get a call from my friend Eric that I went to high school with who knows that I just turned 18 and he goes, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> and I go, uh, yeah. And he goes, hey, do you ever go to uh, any of these strip joints, you know, like nudes, nudes, nudes at the airport? And, and I just wanted to sound cool. And so I was like, uh, nah, man, I don't know if the strip joint scene is really my thing. You know, I just, I don't know. I don't think I need to pay for it or whatever. Like, what a stupid thing. <laughs> I, I just can't go take off the clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah. And so uh, he's like, well, I've been wanting to go to nudes, nudes, nudes forever. I want to go to this place and I want you to go with me. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. So, uh, yeah, we walk in there, pay the cover, whatever. We go in. And like from way across the room, there's the same stripper <laughs> from the day before sees me across the room and goes, Henry, <laughs> and I was just, and my buddy's like, you've never been, fuck you, you probably, they even know your fucking you name. so much. <laughs> that's great. You're the norm of, of that place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's great. Could have been better. Uh, screeching halt. Yep. Um, we could edit out the screeching halt. We could. 
I like a halt. You can make it longer too. You can really extend it. Just really drive extend everybody it. out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did I tell you my strip club uh, brawl story? No. It was a group of like a, like Hell's Angels and uh, like a group of black guys and like a biker gang. I might not tell you this story. Maybe I've told. I, I worry that I've told every story you on every podcast. Sure but story up to this. did you? I went, did you just name three groups, or was that? That was two groups. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I said Hell's Angels, but then I, I always have like commenters in my head being like, "You think this Hell's Angel that ended in 1985?" And I'm like, "Well, whatever. It's just <laughs> whatever they became. Leather guys that are yeah. mean or whatever. Not gay leathers. Yeah, yeah, just really tough guys. But um, <laughs> anyway, so we were at the strip club, the Squire, in uh, I think Revere, Mass, or Malden, one of those. And uh, it was me and my buddy Ryan, and we're at the titty bar, and then this brawl break. It was like a huge, long stage, but the brawl broke out over there, and it was like the craziest brawl I've ever seen. It was like a cartoon, like smoke and arms and leg, and just like beat. At one point, I saw a guy literally take a like a Heineken bottle and smash it over a guy's face. It just went like, damn. It was not like it broke on a guy's face. It was what. So we all scared and ran like into the private rooms, and it was like stacked heads watching this crazy brawl. But the funniest part, the most interesting part, is in the middle of it. A guy just jumped on stage and just collected all the ones and stuffed them <laughs> in his pants and ran out the door. We were like, "That was fucking amazing!" Like wow. he probably made like sixty bucks. Oh my god! It was like I was like, "That is tremendous foresight." I was at a strip club with Rogan and in, in, in Pittsburgh, and we just hear you know the DJ guy, and he goes, "Gentlemen, please stop throwing change at the ladies." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was that guy throwing use of the change. Well, I'm like, well, four it's quarters is a dollar. It's yeah. still this it's currency, you know. It's <laughs> like what? Chuck it, <laughs> whip it out there. I also wow, you just reminded me of this when I my buddy Frank and I went to one of these places during that same time, and uh, I think that like he had like two dollars <laughs> up there, and uh, I wanted to get a dollar bill, so I put like I changed it for my friend's two dollars. I'm like, well, I'm not taking the money off the table. I I put like four Five. quarters on top of his dollar and took one of his dollars, and he's just <laughs> sitting in front of this. He didn't even know this was happening, and so at the end, the, the girl's doing. She's done with her song, and it's, you know it's so quiet that the music is out and over, and she's taking all the dollars, and she takes the dollar from my friend Frank and you hear all these coins just <laughs> clang, clang, clang. <laughs> just like it just made it look like he's been in quarters all night <laughs> oh, it was good times one time uh, Tom Dustin and I went in, to a strip club the uh, it was called the, the Cabaret which I think is also in I don't know what town doesn't matter Saugus and uh, we got there like super early it was New Year's Eve day Ugh. and it opened at noon we just got there at like 11.55 or whatever and the door was open so they were like yeah we're not quite open but like come on in like we're not gonna make you wait outside it's cold so we were like great so we just sat and like took our coats up and then we just put our dollar bills up and there literally wasn't a stripper there yet so then like, <laughs> like a, a couple minutes later the door the front door opens and it's just a stripper like with a big winter coat and a hat and scarf <laughs> and I had one of my all time lines if I may say she just looked over and saw us and I went we're ready when you are <laughs> it killed the bartender laughed and everything it was oh, really fun. Great. but it's so funny to see a stripper like in a fucking winter hat and uh, scarf Oh. Jason Galern has a great joke about like you know you're at the show club too much when when you hear Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> We've got a nice toast and egg buffet waiting while we, the strippers are getting ready. Well, I love to strip oh, club Gilliland's in the morning. So funny. I Gilliland's love that the best. I love strip clubs in the morning. When I was in Montreal, whatever it's year, less one of the years in the morning. Yeah, we went. By the way, remember we were in Montreal together and we almost didn't look up the other club. We were there at the same time. Oh yeah, I was, no, that's right. You were at we the wound nest. up hanging the whole week. You were yeah, at the nest. Two thousand twelve, probably. Yeah, and it was one of those ones where you're like, I wonder who's at the other club, and you're like, Oh, it's one of my closest yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's right. a mile from me. That was the a good worst. Time. Andy Haynes just went. He was like, I'm going to the comedy nest. I'm like, Oh sweet, that fucking it's such a good room. It's like a club club. Goes, it's not that one. It's the other one. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> totally. The nest is that's is the one tough. that I was. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've done. He it a bunch He was at the comics comic one. The works I didn't mind The works has been gone for years now, but I think it might have come. They try to save it. I don't know. Let's not go too far away from strip joints because yep. I just thought yep. of another one. Oh, yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> well, oh, wait, I think Joe's I was just going to talk about we, we, we went to breakfast there every morning during the festival because it was like we're all drunk maniacs. And they had like legs and eggs or whatever. You can go over there. But this is my thing. Like some people are like ant, like think like strip clubs. It's like it's creeps and weird, which it is that. But I'm like my thing was always like, well, we're going to go out drinking. 
So it's fun to be drinking in a place where there's like naked women over <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, something. I'm not like getting a hard on and thinking I'm gonna get laid or anything. I'm just like over at the bar and we're like having a good time. And then you're like, oh, look at those tits. Yep. <laughs> and anyways, so here's the story. <laughs> like we could be doing this right now with three women naked. Yeah. that's cool. No, and it's um... that's what I love about the fringe. It's it's just guys drinking, and then somebody's like, you want to come to a show? They're like, sure. And it's like we'll have a beer there, and then talk afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And, um... In Portland, they like the strip joints are a whole different situation. Portland like they're just rules. sort of everywhere, and it's just considered like a bar. There's no like stigma or whatever. And uh, I did Bridgetown. I think it was 2015. Yeah. And uh, for anybody who keeps track of this kind of thing, <laughs> which uh, was Henry at Bridgetown? I, I almost <laughs> have my box score made <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, man, I, I just I just had so much fun. I got off the plane, saw a couple of uh, buddies. I think it was uh, my friend TJ Chambers. I think it was Matt Kirshen also. Matt Kirshen was there. And then we were like, hey, let's get a beer right here next to the hotel. And so we go, and it's a bar, a beautiful looking bar, but it's also, like you said, it's got strippers dancing naked. And so we're like, all right. And so, but we were the only ones in there and we're sitting by the bar area and we're all catching up and hanging out and chit chatting. But there's this strip situation happening with nobody over there. And we literally, and I'm not saying this to, it sound like some sort of like uh, some kind of like uh, good person or whatever, but like we literally felt bad for the stripper, so we all went over and sat down by the little tub where she does her thing, and so oh. we're like, this is because otherwise it's awkward, yeah. and, we, and we put money out there, and then we're sort of like, yeah, and then she starts sort of talking to us and stuff, and then she says, so what are you guys doing, and. Uh, uh, we're doing shows for this Bridgetown thing, and then she's like doing this. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And then she starts going like this, just kind of like putting her hand down by her crotch and everything. And then she asked me like, "What, what venue?" And I said, "It's called uh, the Alhambra, I think, or something like that." I'm doing it tonight at eight o'clock. And then she goes, uh, "Oh, I heard that place is shady." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I guess it probably is." But it was just, I still think about that. Now, there's there's a little uh, tag to that story, yeah, please, because that was like my story of the three days that we were hanging out there at Bridgetown, and uh, like uh, people like you know Matt or somebody was just like, "Hey, you got to tell the story about the what the stripper said." And so I was doing it, and I was like. Um, Oh yeah, she kept saying, "Yeah, I heard that place was shady." So I keep having to do the physical thing, but every time I did it, there was like one girl who worked for the festival that like somehow I'd be I'd look over and then she'd go like this, like like pretend that she didn't see. And I'm like, "How come every time I'm going like this, I look?" And then she's probably like, "Well, who's that guy who always rubs his dick. crotch?" <laughs> Uh, that's great. <laughs> it was just like one of those coincidences. She's probably like here right now and just going, he's still fucking <laughs> yeah, doing just it. Her head in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Dude, I went to a strip club at the Bridgetown Festival with like, it was like 50 guys and we just took over and it was two strippers oh, yeah. daytime. And it was just two strippers. One of them, I remember dancing to the song Duluth by Mason Jennings. It was nice. so hot with all her tattoos that's and great. stuff. The other one nobody cared about. But we just kept doing business. Nick Rutherford was he got soup and he was eating soup like <laughs> on the strip bar bar. And then I remember Pete Holmes like fresh out of religion just in the back. <laughs> just going, what the fuck? Was like I denounce <laughs> yeah. religion. He was just into like regular world. And he's like, this is what it's like. <laughs> Soder and I were in Portland together the day of um, the women's march. There was the Trump inauguration and we were both had plans to go. It was supposed have- to start earlier, but they kept getting lost. Um, <laughs> nailed it. Um, you know, my joke was that they kept chanting, "Who runs the world? We do." And I was like, "Well, what are we marching for?" Yeah, if you already, you know, <laughs> like, well, it sounds like you're so, dominant. Sounds covered. It sounds if like you, you're killing yeah. it. But uh, we were like, we were both in Portland. He was working helium. I was open for Louis, and I was like, "We w- we should go to the strip club and have breakfast." There's like one particular strip club that's like the breakfast place. And then when we woke up, it was like this international women, a billion women marching for women. And we were like, I was like, ah, maybe, is this weird? Maybe we should, this feels weird. And so we were like, yeah, let's not. It feels like if people find out we went to the titty bar <laughs> on the day of the, the women's day. march. So we didn't go. And instead we like went and watched the march. And we were like, yeah, let's go, women. And then you realize I'm like, all we did was just not 
give our give money women. to working women. <laughs> like we yeah. actually just fucked over some yeah. women. <laughs> like we were gonna go and give like a hundred bucks to women who work for a living. Yeah. Instead, we just stood at the sidewalk, being like, "Woo!" Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the way. That's the way a lot of those things end. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if the women strippers like, "Can I get off for the march?" And like, "Nah, should have scheduled it earlier. I need you here. You can march yeah. on stage." Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, just exactly. yeah the women's march. I mean, at least at least a couple women lost money because of the march because we were like, "We're gonna be the assholes." They need of all the characters they have for like the women strippers, like cowboy or whatever. They should have like angry feminist yeah <laughs> screaming at men for equality and then like taking off her clothes <laughs> while she does it well my idea for strip club i always liked is that like oh i hate the I shoes i hate the big clear heels it's like no woman has ever worn those it's like wait i would love to see a stripper with like jeans and like you know low top sneakers and like a sweater and yeah. then they get naked they're just walking also, around for a while like a normal people yeah and how about this just like wear a mini skirt with no underwear and just kind of sit where people can like oh shit Oh, yeah. yeah. Where like you feel that. like you've gotten something instead of just being fully naked. That's a nice thing just regular women could do mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Please. No, yeah, because it's all about hey, the leave, unattainable. Leave your pussy pics in the comments <laughs> yeah. on YouTube if you could. Just, yeah, uh, just like at Wendy's or whatever. <laughs> just kind of hang out with your <laughs> vaginas out for our benefit. Yeah. Yeah, that. I think that's got to be because I, I remember even thinking that like back 30 years ago or whatever but like when yeah there'd be like the waitress at these places and then she'd That's bend the over it's like can i see your nipple like what yeah. is going oh, on oh, there oh, yeah it's, it's like, a full fucking <laughs> yeah, tip yeah, in yeah. your face like get out of here yeah yeah like, exactly your nipple. yeah totally i just had that thing where you think your phone is charging for the last hour and it just totally wasn't it was not no ah oh, i'm geez. like i'm lower let's see how this <laughs> one's doing oh, you're killing it oh, yeah 90 yeah, oh, I'm fuck! I got good. fucked. Oh, Here you want to switch? <laughs> That's yeah. the worst feeling. I've had that before. Where you're on a, you're on, like waiting for a flight to take off, and you fall asleep, and then you wake up, and you realize the flight has not taken off, and you're oh. like, what? <laughs> and you're like, it's like I thought I was fast forwarding, but instead I was on pause. Like you're like, what the fuck? There is no. Ba it's a great feeling when you fall asleep before you even, and then all of a sudden you're like, how how much we had an hour left? This oh day. yeah, I love that. Yeah, just yeah. missed it. Yeah, if you're lucky to be able to sleep. Should we go see White Reaper? Yeah, let's go see White Sounds Reaper. We gotta eat. To Maybe me. we should go to that chicken place. Is that love it? Let's go down there. How long get a ago chicken Sandy. Eat? I'll do whatever you guys want. I gotta say, it's uh, obviously I'm coming from out west and everything. I'd love to get pizza too if there's if you guys are into that. But if you want hey, chicken, you're talking to the right guy. I was worried about him. We passed oh, okay. Joe's. We passed the Joe's over oh. on uh, Third. We go to that one. There's a Joe's on Third. Third and Fourteenth. Oh, I didn't even know there was a Joe's there. Yeah. This is this is uh, captivating. <laughs> I have a story about pizza, too, believe it or not. No, uh, please. Uh, when I was a kid, growing up here, I was at 100th and Riverside is where we lived. And uh, I remember eating a pizza and some lady, this is just a classic New York story, she saw me and she goes, what are you doing? This is how you eat it. And <laughs> what she, a <laughs> Fuck her. <laughs> she folded my pizza in half and then oh. I just, I've done that ever since because I'm terrified that some lady's going to yell at me if oh. I don't. Yeah, can you believe it? She, oh. she, she put her hands all over my pizza and everything. Oh. I just what had are a, you doing, you idiot? I just had a thing and I, I shouldn't <laughs> share the story because it's like so specifically a person. <laughs> Disgusting. Get your yeah. fucking hands off my... Uh. This 10-year-old kid. This is a person a that could then. totally... Uh, you open that? You want me to can hear that dog really? crying. Oh, come okay, on in, buddy. buddy. Okay. Um, back. So this person can like totally just hear this and know it was them. But <laughs> I was there, so I'll try to disguise. But I was like in a town famous for its pizza, and I was like, yeah, I'm going. Uh, it was Chicago. I'm going to Chicago. I'm like, I'm gonna go to. Um, we're going to Lou Malnati's. Me and my my buddy Matt, my opener, who will be there tonight, Matt Wayne. Oh, nice. And I was like, let's go to Lou Malnati's. You know, we went there last time we were here, and it's if you've never been, it's like the thick. Oh, yeah. Pizza. It's like a big fucking oh, messy yeah, it's insane. pot. It's insane. And uh, the, a guy that we knew was like, nobody eats that fucking garbage in Chicago. You want you want Chicago? You go to this place. And he's like, it's thin <laughs> crust. It's perfect. But we ended up going because he was like so adamant. And then I'm like, all right. And then you're eating it. And you're like, well, we're just eating shittier New York pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly. like, this is pizza I eat every week. And you're like, well, now I went a whole Chicago trip. I won't be back there for a year. And I didn't eat the pizza I love because oh. this guy was like, nah, oh, I that's hate garbage. when people do that yeah. shit. The thing is, if you ask a waiter for a recommendation, like, how's the so and so, or what's, what's your favorite? What You have to get it when he tells you, unless right. you're ready with, like, oh, I don't like cottage cheese. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I can't have anything. But unless you're ready with that kind of answer, you have to get it. So if you know what you're going to get, 
Don't ask. Yeah, yeah. Because unless he says the what you were gonna get, you're fucked. Oh yeah, you because yeah, it looks so weird to be like. Mm. Oh, the, you I gotta mean, get you the look burner. like a nice guy, but I, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's also like, and in Chicago we don't eat that. And I'm like, but I'm not from Chicago. Yeah. I am a tourist. <laughs> well, yeah, when people say uh, that only as tourists go there, well, that's what I fucking am. Yes. But, um I was in I was in uh, Myanmar, and my friend he was. Taking it's called a Burma. Fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> My friend was taking pictures with a nice camera, trying to do photography, and and he said, uh, "Well, I don't want to, I don't want to take it around because I want to look like a tourist." And they're like, "Oh yeah, I'm sure six foot three white guy won't, <laughs> won't stick out like doesn't his look like a him. tourist." <laughs> yeah, no, I me- I remember. Uh, well, there's the whole Rays thing where you know, and again, I grew up here. There there was a particular Rays on Eleventh Street and Sixth Ave that I loved, and uh-huh. I would go there every time I would Name's come Rays? into town. And I told one of my comic friends who was living here at the time, and uh, he, I go, I'm gonna get some pizza, and he goes like, Where are you going? And I go, I'm going to the Rays on Eleventh uh, Street, and he goes. Uh, he goes, you know, Rays is just a scam, right? <laughs> like, scam? like they're all called Rays. And what I go, I go, scam? I go, listen, get the, a yeah, I know what he was talking about. Like they all call themselves Rays after whatever the original and then there wasn't even an original, whatever. But I'm like this, the way this scam works is I get, and I've done it a million times. I give them three dollars and they give me the best fucking pizza I've ever had. <laughs> like if every scam ended that way, you. I'd be so into getting scammed like all the time. But it's like, what do you mean it's a scam? Oh, that's great. <laughs> we had a scam in Thailand. We were, we had one last day in Bangkok and our flight was till like ten p.m. So like, let's do some touring. We we're going to go to the palace, and some guys like we're, we're looking for the entrance. Some guys like, oh, it's, it's a holiday today. It's not open. That's what you're looking for. Like, fuck. He goes, you should get a tuk tuk though, and like have him like drive you around. And he like waves one down. He's like, take these guys around or whatever. Yeah. So they took us around. We gave him like whatever it was, and then we got back. Found that's a scam. It is open. It was open. Oh. Like, it was and we're like, what the fuck? And then we realized we just got a tour for like twelve dollars though. Yeah. 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 It took yeah. Us all around the city. <laughs> it was pretty pretty nice scam. Yeah, that's not a bad scam. Yeah. The, the, the shitty scams are when you don't get anything and you just are out a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ponzi schemes. <laughs> they're like, yeah. Not great. Did I ever tell you this one? This is also embarrassing. I know we got to ramp up. Sorry, but it's funny because this is a podcast that will end and then we'll just continue to talk we'll exactly the talk. way yeah. we're talking. Yeah. But uh, this is when I was like, I think I was eighteen. Maybe I had just graduated graduated high school and my girlfriend was a year behind me she was in high school i was like we were like 17 and 16 or 18 17 and uh we were going to the red sox game and this is like 2000 where it's like they weren't they hadn't quite started selling out every game or maybe it was earlier whatever but i was like i know how to buy tickets off a scalper i wanted to show her that i was like streetwise so i was like let's go get tickets off a scalper and I was like talking to the scalper, and clearly he just sees I'm like a teenager, fucking idiot. Like I'm in high school, <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, we got ticket box seats, whatever. And I was like, oh, we're just looking to get in the ballpark, which is like something I had heard somebody say. <laughs> so I was like, we just want to get in the ballpark. We don't care about the seat. And he's like, all right, all right. Uh, what? How much money do you have? And I was like, uh, I had. How much money do you have? I was like, I got. He <laughs> owns you already. What at the time? I was like, I got sixty bucks, but I'm not looking. He goes, give me, give me a sixty bucks. And he gives me the money. I, I just hand him the money, and he's like, follow me, and. My girlfriend at the time was like, Joe, what are you doing? And I was like, this, it's, don't worry, this guy, yeah, I know. <laughs> and we walk, and I follow him like 300 yards, and he just walks into the box office for Fenway Park, goes up to the window, comes out, hands me two tickets, and walks away, he goes, there you go. And I look, and the face value is like $12. Oh. Like, it just totally wasn't sold out. He just <laughs> took my money, bought the tickets to the box office, and took the other $40. That's amazing. It's not just a scam, it's also embarrassing you in front of your girlfriend. Oh, it was so humiliating, and I tried to act it off like, all right, we're in. Yeah, <laughs> she nah. was like looking at the tickets, like, "Ah, you're just a fucking uh-huh. retard." There's oh, no man. way. I hate that shit. Buying yeah, jewelry. Bad. Have you ever done that? It's like I have no idea. Yeah, like, what know. they could a million? Just a sitting duck, Four? you know? Yeah, it's like even if they're like, "Yeah, this is seven hundred dollars. This is a good deal. It could be something worth fifty dollars." I don't know. Yeah. I don't have the machinery. They just name you something like <laughs> Jim. You've heard of like Topaz? Or yeah, something like yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. I've it's, heard of it. Yeah. Now, let's go watch White Reaper. All right, let's right, we'll do go it. to White Reaper. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Concert. God, they fucking shred, dude. I love rock and roll, and I love guitar-driven rock and roll. I mean, that's my favorite. Arcade Fire is great.
with their fucking 72 instruments, many of which were retired in the 1700s. They're playing the fucking digital flute, you know? That's Lizzo. They're playing a didgeridoo. They're uh, playing the fucking uh, uh, fucking stringed banjo. They're playing the fucking stringed accordion. They do everything. No, I don't want to shit on Arcade Fire. I do love them, especially their, you know, neon Bible and the burbs and all that. But I do love rock and roll. And these guys fucking shred. White Reaper, guys. What is this? Asking for a ride. Is that the name of the new album? Nope. You Deserve Love is the one I have. <laughs> anyway. Um, fucking fun concert. And thank you, Joe List and uh, Henry Phillips, for coming out and doing my podcast. I appreciate it. Sitting right here and right there. Um, next week will be Big J Okerson. His special is coming out on April 5th. Be excited. It's the first one I helped make, produce. I want a better title for produced. There's a better title for what I do. Because I'm not really hiring camera guys and lighting guys. I'm getting someone else, Matt Schuler, to do all that. And Eric Abrams directs. It's something else I do. I need a title for it. I need a title for it. It's like overseen by, uh, prepped, prepped with, comedian consultant. Something like that. Reach out. Let me know. Um, make sure to follow me on Instagram, slash Ari Shafir. YouTube, my own special will be out. Uh, well, it's been out. Uh, Jew, trying to get up to 6 million views. It's at 5.6 right now. Only 330,000 more views to go. Um, and the Beacon, you guys. I'm very, very excited. Again, you want to be in your seats at 8 o'clock. At 8, 10 latest, but it might be earlier. And I, I planned a fun opening. I have special uh, guest uh, comedians. Uh, um, you might know, you might not, who knows, um, you will, and, um, and it's just going to be a fucking fun time, it's going to be a celebration, I heard once, um, talked about this on Bobby Kelly's podcast, it'll be out, I guess it's out now, or today, or tomorrow, and, uh, at one time Bill Burr was doing the Radio City Music Hall, with Bartnick and Verzi, and he goes, hey guys, this is Radio City, so no fucking around, you know, this is when you bring the show, and that's what I plan to bring to you guys the show i like to make a whole show it's part of what i do is 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 produce is get things together that's what i did but this is not happening that's what i'm gonna do for this is still happening in austin texas the comedy mother load <laughs> we got it. what are the nicknames for comedy mothership comedy shipwreck oh if somebody bombs that's a comedy shipwreck who's gonna be the first comedy shipwreck it's gonna be me <laughs> I mean, I take shots. It's all in the fucking uh, lineage of Jim Painter. I take shots. I go down swinging. I'm Rob Deere. 220 batter, but fucking led the league in home runs. Mm, uh, off the wall doubles. Um, and that's it. Guys, yeah, get tickets right now for all my tour. Uh, Glasgow, London, Manchester. We're going to add a show in London. That one's pretty much sold out. Um, Manchester, too. Plenty of seats left in Glasgow. Um and then Amsterdam, Stockholm, Berlin, Vienna, Libina, Cluj, Naparokas, Bucharest, uh, Athens, Greece. I'm Ari Shafir. Until next week with Big J Okerson, where we take a ride. Uh, I've already picked out the title for next week. Uh, LG, Big J from LGA. We go to LaGuardia, I pick him up, and we just drove around New York. Um, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Leave a comment. Subscribe to my YouTube account. Even if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anything, go to my YouTube account, youtube.com slash Ari Shafir, and give it a subs. Give it a subscribe. You know what they say, help with the algorithm. Leave a comment. Um, you know, whatevs. Um, and if you're at the Beacon Show, I don't know, say your favorite memory. That'll be next week, I guess. That'll be the intro for next week. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. And thank you, Sheath, for helping sponsor this episode. I'll talk to you guys next week.